I've always had a hard time explaining what I do. As a computer engineer, I spent years trying to explain my dad that my job had very little to do with making his printer work. As a photographer, most of my friends and family keep wondering why I ruin my photos, shooting them in black and white. After all, everything around us is in color, right? What I clearly fail to make them understand is that behind my monochrome images, there is much more than just removing colors from a photograph. I've been making my images in black and white for a few years now, and I don't see that changing ever. For me, black and white is an indispensable tool to create the kind of work that I attempt to create. It lets me depart from reality. It allows me to produce images that are the result of my own interpretation and view of what I see. During these years, where I created my main work almost exclusively in black and white, I've learned a few things that I wanted to share with you today. These are my 10 tips to create better black and white images. Hello guys and welcome to another video. My name is Adrian and for those who don't know me, I'm an Spanish American photographer. I'm a full time photographer. I shoot both film, medium format film and digital with an APS-C camera. And I travel the world creating my images and I try to share this journey and this adventure with you in this YouTube channel. As I said, we are going to be talking about 10 tips to create better black and white images. But before doing so, let me do a little bit of self-promotion. This is the current image of the month. For those who don't know, I release one new image for sale on my website a month. And for the first 30 days, I'm offering this print at a 50% discount. After that, it will the price will increase to full price and it will never be this low again. So this is the image of the month of November. It's called Alpine Garden. And I created this image in Mount Rainier National Park in Washington. I'm gonna link the video somewhere around here where I created this image. Uh, it was made with my Bronica in medium format film, IL4HP5. They ship worldwide. So if you like it and are interested and you wanna support my work, you can check the link down below in the description to my website and get your own copy. Tip number one, simplify your compositions. Now, this could be said for both color and black and white photography, but I think that black and white benefits much more than color. You see, black and white images are all about the contrast, the contrast between the bright and the dark, between the black and the white. If our subject is dark, we're going to be looking for a mostly bright background. And the opposite is true too. If our subject is bright, we're going to be looking for a mostly dark background. Here, there are no colors to help us separating the different elements in our composition. Here, we need to use other things instead, like shapes or textures. But the most important thing, the most important tool to separate different elements in a composition is the contrast between them. And there is nothing better to create high contrast images than looking for simple compositions. We want to remove the unnecessary from our images so the contrast is the highest. We could shoot from below so we contrast our subject against the sky. We could shoot in the fog so all the noise in the background gets removed and instead we get this bright uniform background that we could use to contrast our dark subjects like trees or buildings or even people. Tip number two is do not convert from color to black and white. I mean, this is fine and it will work sometimes, but I think it's a mistake in the long term. What we see with our own eyes as a clear contrast because the colors are completely different might not translate the same way to a black and white image. We need to see in black and white from the very beginning, from the very conception of our image. Now, this is not easy. It's pretty hard. And even though you get better over time, I personally still struggle in busy scenes because I can't really wrap my mind around how those colors are going to translate to a black and white image. This is normal, by the way. Masters of black and white photography like Ansel Adams uh, used to use some kind of filters. I'm not really sure what kind, but he used to put that filter in front of his eyes so he could see a preview of the scene in black and white. He would use a Polaroid too, not only to get the black and white preview, but also to check his exposure. Today, in 2018, we could, but we don't need to use those filters or a Polaroid to actually check what our image 
will look like in black and white. When I shoot film, I use my digital camera, I set it to black and white so I can preview the scene and I can check if the contrast between the elements that are gonna be in the frame is enough. Of course, when I'm shooting digital, I also have my digital camera set to black and white. But no matter what you do, I believe it's really important to think of our images in black and white from the very beginning. Tip number three, embrace the dark shadows. I love the deep, dark shadows with almost no detail. As I said before, I'm not interested in recreating reality as it is. I want to create my own interpretation. And I love those really deep, dark shadows. That's also a way to simplify your composition because you remove all the details from those shadows. Remember tip number one. This way we can increase the contrast between those shadows and everything else. One good example of these uh, dark uh, shadow areas with almost no details would be silhouettes. Uh, I love silhouettes. I find myself looking for silhouettes very often. I think they are a very important tool for black and white images. I personally don't believe that the same applies to those bright, almost white, with almost no details, highlights. I like to use the highlights to create textures. That's why I love overcast days, when you can use the clouds to do that. Tip number four, shoot during sunrise or sunset. Many people believe that sunrise and sunset times are much better for color photography, and I completely disagree. Good light is always good light, it doesn't matter if you're shooting color or black and white. But there are many reasons that lead me to believe that black and white is actually the right choice for those times. For example, it's only during sunrise and the few hours after sunrise, or during sunset and the few hours before sunset, that the sun is low enough in the horizon and that creates shadows with the landscape. It could be buildings, it could be trees, it could be mountains. And shadows are awesome for black and white photography. You should always be looking for shadows. The reason for that is because they create contrast. If you get shadows in your image, try to embrace the dark shadows. Try to darken those to actually make your subject stand out even more. Also, moments before sunrise and moments after sunset, the sky can get pretty bright compared to the dark landscape that is not being lit up by the sun anymore. This is another good time to get that contrast that we are looking for. Think of mountains, black shapes without those many times unnecessary elements like trees, roads or houses. Tip number five, don't be afraid of using wide apertures. This is a tool that photographers have to separate the subject in busy scenes. I've done this in the past, although it's not my favorite use for this tool. You see, the bigger the size of the sensor of your camera, the smaller the depth of field gets. With my medium format film camera, I'm able to get a very, very shallow depth of field, and that allows me to distort perspective a little bit. This is nowhere near what you could achieve with a large format camera, of course. But still, medium format or very fast lenses on full frame or even APS-C, they will give you very shallow depth of field that you can use as a creative tool. Tip number six, use color filters. This is again about creating contrast in your black and white images. Sometimes that contrast presents itself naturally like at sunrise or sunset, but we could use tools to artificially create that contrast. One of those tools is color filters. I only use one, this high quality orange filter, and I only use it when I shoot film. This doesn't really work with digital. I don't use it all the time though. You have to be aware when the filter helps you increase the contrast in your composition. The most clear example is blue skies. An orange or even better, a red filter will darken those skies to an almost black. That will create a huge contrast if you have some white and bright clouds against that dark, almost black sky. And a scenario where you wouldn't want to use an orange or red filter is, for example, if you are photographing a subject that is dark and is against a blue sky. You don't want to darken those blue skies because then the contrast between your background and your subject is going to decrease. If you shoot digital, then you have a huge advantage because you can manipulate each color separately in post. I do this all the time with my digital images. When you shoot film, you don't have any color information in post, so you have to make this decision when you are taking the photo and that's why you need to use those color filters in the field and not afterwards. Tip number seven, it's an easy and obvious one, but is to increase the contrast. 
I've been talking a lot about increasing the contrast between the darks and the brights, between the shadows and the highlights of your images, and of course the easiest way to do this is to move that is contrast slider to the right, or in a more analog way to use an orange or red filter that increases the contrast, to push your film and push it between one or two, or to use filters if you print your work in a darkroom. All of those increase the overall contrast of your image. Tip number 8 is to use grain. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I love grain in my images, that's another reason why I push my film. If I'm shooting digital, I add the grain in post. The reason for that is to give the image a little bit of texture, most importantly those deep dark shadows that otherwise would be just black, now they have a little bit of texture, that little bit of grain that makes them feel a little bit more organic and not artificial or digital in a way. Tip number 9, and I can barely do that, is to get inspired. Luckily for us black and white photographers, black and white photography has been around for a long time, so there are plenty of photographers to look up to. I'm gonna give you just a few names that you probably already know, but uh, these are my favorite photographers. I own books by all of them. It's a bummer, but I don't have any books here with me to show you. I love the style of Bill Brandt and Michael Kenna, how they embrace those deep dark shadows and how they are after that uh, imperfect landscape. I absolutely love the work of Joseph Kudelka, how he approaches photography, you can tell that he loves it so much, he shows in his work all the time. Even though my own work has a very different subject matter than Kudelka's, I still love to look at his images, I love his style too, the grain and the noise in his images, he used to push his film as much as he could and I just completely absolutely love that. Other names are Lee Friedlander, Robert Frank, and of course Ansel Adams. The last one, tip number 10, is to get out, practice and experiment. I know that this applies for both color and black and white photography, but I believe that it's even much more important for black and white photography. And the reason is because, as I said before, we see in color and the translation between those colors and the black and white in our images is not always easy or immediate. The more we shoot, the more we practice, the more we experiment, the more we learn and the more we can improve our photography. This will always be the ultimate tip for me in photography. Get out, shoot, take those photos and have fun in the process. Those are the 10 things or tips to create better black and white images that I could come up with. If you have any other tips, please share them with us in the comments down below. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate and leave a comment down below too. But for now, this is all I got for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Are you kidding me?